Welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't know, I've done near 150, 160 reports from Tiger Mountain over the last three or four years. And you know, never once have I thanked the traditional landowners. So I just really like to take this opportunity to thank the traditional landowners of this property that, you know, where my house has stood for, you know, uh, and I'd really like to thank this lovely Jewish family who used to own this block, and they were absolutely fantastic. And, you know, I'd like to give my full respect to the uh, Weinsteins and uh, who used to own this block, and that's my thank you to, to them. And we're going to talk about that tonight, the traditional landowners, and welcome to country on the report from Dagger Mountain. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, obviously, as Tim pointed out in the break just then, I forgot to thank their, their leaders, the Weinstein leaders in the past, present, and the future. You know, the uh, long line of Weinsteins who used to own land in this area. So, you know, I, I forgot to thank them, and it's deeply, deep, I deeply apologize. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the joke, um, you know, on uh, Welcome to Country. I mean, what a load of rubbish, ladies and gentlemen. Have you ever heard a bigger load of rubbish. First of all, welcome to country. It's something that's done by white people. Have you noticed that? I mean, I know a few Aboriginal leaders do get up and they, they say it occasionally because they're part of that kind of like gravy train of funding that Aborigines get. And I'm sure, you know, they're making a fortune on that. And I guess if I was an Aboriginal, I'd probably jump on that bandwagon as well. Why not? You get a lot of free money, go for it. But you know what I mean? It, it, it's a joke, ladies and gentlemen. And first of all, it's ridiculous tokenism. I mean, does people in Israel, do they say, you know, I'd like to thank the Palestinians who used to live here until we kicked them off. You know what I mean? give me a break it's a joke do, do even in america do they say i'd like to thank the native american indians who used to own manhattan you know in just about every meeting in manhattan that's happened in the last got 100 years of course not it's patently ridiculous it's tokenistic it actually is a kind of it's it definitely a form of white privilege because they're basically saying look we stole it but you know we sort of feel bad about it, so we're going to give you this tokenistic thank you. And then we're just going to get on with being incredibly uh, rich, white, upper middle class uh, left wingers. So it's a load of rubbish. Uh, welcome to country, you know what I mean? It's just, you know, it, it's a patently ridiculous form of stupidity. And um, it, it's meaningless, you know, and it's just a, a, a crazy form of tokenism. You know what I mean? Um, Australia uh, was founded by, as we well know, the First Fleet. And what Australia was before the First Fleet, or, you know, they call it Gondwana land. I mean, I agree that the Aborigines were here before us. I agree that we haven't always treated the Aborigines nicely. I agree with the long Australian philosophy of treat the Aborigines nicely. I agree with that. I think, you know, I don't mind sometimes when we fund certain things to, you know, arts groups, or whatever, you know, most of it's wasted, let's be honest. But occasionally we, we fund something or we, we pour a little extra money into their communities. I mean, we pour, you know, let's face it, we pour billions into these communities and still nothing changes. They're still absolutely hopeless. But anyway, that's what the situation, ladies and gentlemen. And, um, you know, this welcome to country is just, I mean, it, it's ridiculous. There is one country. It's divisive. It's kind of woke. Um, you know, it's one country and it's Australia. And uh, the Aborigines are part of it like anybody else. Yes, they were here before us, so we can give them a sense of respect. Um, Aboriginal nationalism, I can understand it because I like all forms of nationalism. I like black nationalism, so I can understand that. Uh, I can relate to it. I can walk with uh, Aborigines, you know what I mean? I can feel proud with them that they have a very specific kind of blood and soil relationship to the land. I get that, and I'm, I'm actually quite open to be respectful on that. But all this, you know, uh, you know, I mean, Australia was founded by the First Fleet, and, you know, if they wanted it to change, you know, they needed an army, ladies and gentlemen. You know, they needed a standing army if they wanted to, uh, uh, what's it called, expel the First Fleet. They needed border patrol, and they didn't have that. And, you know, I mean, they always complain about the British taking over here. But really, I mean, imagine if it was the Germans. Imagine if they did expel the British, and then the Germans came here, or the Belgians. Look what the Belgians did in the Congo, mate. That's like a, like a holocaust that happened there. It was like, you know, uh, you know, you just got to look into the situation with King Leopold II, what he did in, in the Belgian Congo ladies and gentlemen. That's pure heart of darkness material. So it's absolutely shocking. I think um, they should be grateful. The Aborigines should be grateful that the British, even though they weren't perfect, let's admit it. But, um, you know, they are a lot better than the Germans and the Belgians or even the French would have been. Maybe the French would have been okay. I don't know. That's the best they could have hoped for. But they've got a continent the size of the United States. Um, they, their, their basic technological level is in the Stone Age. They haven't invented the wheel. Um, and so they haven't even moved into the Bronze Age, ladies and gentlemen, which is, what, 3,000 years ago? or something like that. So that how can they expect to uh, repel people who've got basically muskets and uh, cannons and a navy and things like this? Obviously they can't. So it's ridiculous. Um, I find all this stuff about welcome to country 
uh, kind of sickening left-wing tokenism. And, you know, even though I respect the Aborigines, and I think if you're honest with them and you just told them this, I think they'd respect that as well. And we could all move together as Australians and have a kind of Australian nationalism, which would include Aboriginal nationalism, ladies and gentlemen, because they are an important part of Australia. I don't admit it. I mean, you know, I do admit it. So, uh, and that's that. That's the report from Tiger Mountain. Thank you.